Okay, hi folks. Today, we're gonna cover the cradle technique. And I got my boy Byron here out. And the reason I chose Byron is he's a very vocal, loud, high energy dog. And so I thought he might make a good dog to demo this with. Now, when you go to start practicing this, you don't wanna use a high tempo dog, or if you have one, you wanna practice this in the house. And the technique that we're gonna be talking about and showing today is the cradle technique. And we're also gonna be putting out multiple videos on this because one of the beautiful things about this technique is it can be used with most tools. Meaning, you see him, Byron here is hooked up on a no-pull harness. We can do it with any type of collar. Um, you could even do it with the head halties. You cannot successfully execute it with a traditional attach from the back harness. But most other tools that the dogs use can be used, the cradle technique can be used with it. So, what is the cradle technique good for? The cradle technique is really good for four things. If you are a handler or trainer, one of the things you wanna do is you have your anchor hand and then you slide your other hand down here on your communication hand, okay? You see the natural cradle that's in front of me. So if you're a handler or a trainer, or if you own a dog that can redirect back on you, you have the cradle to protect you. What you're seeing here is he's got a dog in his view, okay? So if you have a dog like Byron, A lot of the times owners fight with the reactivity or the... I'm showing you just another example of what the cradle can do. But what I want to capture in this particular video is if you have a dog that's being reactive, instead of pulling or fighting your dog and trying to get him out of there, guide him, lead him. And the cradle technique is an excellent technique to do exactly that. So I'm going to have these people come a little closer and his intensity is going to rise. And then I'm going to execute the cradle technique. So now they're, you can't see them, but now they're right up on us. You can see by the intensity climbing right there. Cradle in front of me. For me to escort my boy out of here, even if he was getting ready to start the lunging or whatnot, I'm gonna execute this, and it's gonna be very quickly, and then I'm gonna come back and explain all the little things that were happening. Okay. Yeah, and I'll do it one more time, and then I'm gonna come back and explain it. So he's, he's getting worked up, and there you go. Those are about 12 feet away, okay? I'm gonna slide my hand down here, have my cradle. There we go, we got a little piping in on the other one. Perfect for video, okay? I need to move my dog before this becomes too intense. Thank you, ladies, you're good. good. Now let me explain in detail what just happened there, quickly. had my cradle. I brought my cradle across the front of the dog underneath its chin, good, and in front of him, like this. That was one. More importantly is my communication hand signaled over the top of the dog this way. You see him already turning. It's like a steering a horse. You turn this way, you turn that way. So my communication hand signaled my dog we're going that way. My Cradle came across the front, and then the support of my body movement and positioning would guide the dog out of there to where we can walk over here and away from the high stimulus or trigger. Highly effective technique. It beats fighting your dog and pulling back on your dog. Let me give you the most common mistakes made. One of the most common mistakes made and why this technique won't work is the owner or handler comes too wide and the dog shoots back in between. Okay, so you're here and you go this way and, this, and, you, and you didn't close and the dog shoots back this way. That's one of the big faults. So when you turn, make sure your body's up on your dog's shoulder in the neck area guiding him out. The other thing that, the reason that it won't be successful is 
you continue, you stop guiding or leading with your communication hand. You have got to communicate to your dog and lead him completely with this over the top. You start turning and then you give up the lead and the dog turns back into you. You have to lead the dog all the way out, just like steering a horse. So hopefully in this particular video, we covered how you can get a dog to walk out of a pressure situation with the cradle technique. We're gonna be putting more videos together maybe with other tools and show you about two or three other really good reasons why the cradle technique is so effective. Thank you, Bobby.